Welcome back, horror fans, to another chilling episode of Anatomy of Horror, where we put one of your supernatural killers under the microscope. Today's patient is none other than the iconic Jason Voorhees. We're going to be breaking down just what's under that hockey mask, from his grotesque face, to his freakish durability, to his fear of water, and even how he survived space. So, if you ever wondered how Jason keeps coming back, no matter how many times he's killed, then grab your machetes and let's dive in. So let's get straight into it. What's behind Jason's mask? Well, if you've ever seen it come off, unlucky you. You see, Jason was born with a condition called hydrocephalus, which results in excess fluid building up around the brain. This causes your head to swell, as well as your facial features to deform. And unfortunately, Jason had a particularly bad form of this. Imagine Gollum and Frankenstein having a really bad day, and you've got Jason's face. His misshapen head, decaying skin, and rotten flesh are as a result of years of drowning, decay, and a little extra seasoning from having been set on fire, electrocuted, and even impaled. Basically, Jason's face has been through more trauma than most horror fans who've attended a midnight screening. But why does he hide this lovely mug? Well, it's not just for scaring teenagers at summer camp. You see, Jason's mask may well represent something far deeper. Jason grew up isolated and bullied because of his deformities. And you could argue that from a psychological perspective, his mask isn't just covering his face, it's covering his childhood trauma. When Jason was just a boy, the other kids at Camp Crystal Lake tormented him because of his appearance, leading to his infamous drowning. So his mask is more than just a fashion statement. It's a way for him to disconnect from the pain in his past and form a new identity. That is, a faceless monster who's above any form of rejection. And let's not forget that when the counsellors who should have been looking after him were gone off having, let's say, intimate moments, poor little Jason was drowning. So it really makes sense that seeing people get close sends him into a murderous rage. To Jason, intimacy isn't just gross, it's a reminder of the neglect that ended up killing him. Ah, oh, and that drowning, that tragic moment that kicked off decades of carnage. In Friday the 13th Law, Jason allegedly drowned as a boy whilst the camp counsellors were too busy to save him. But did he really drown? Well, it's really up for debate. Some fans believe that Jason actually survived this and went on to live in the woods, becoming a feral maniac whilst others think that Jason did really die and was reanimated by his mother's vengeful spirit. Either way, when he does return as an adult, he's basically a walking, stabbing, slashing revenant. Now, medically speaking, Jason's body doesn't function like ours. He doesn't need food, water, or oxygen in the same way our bodies do. His cells seem to regenerate at an incredible rate, allowing him to survive some really fatal injuries. Remember, in Jason Lives, he effectively gets impaled and then electrocuted by a lightning bolt, which actually brings him back to life. At this point, Jason isn't merely a guy with a grudge, he's literally an undead force of nature. Now let's talk about Jason's fighting style. Sure, Jason doesn't look like your typical Mensa candidate, but don't be fooled, because when it comes to hunting, he's a tactical genius. Now, to be clear, we're not talking about him being book smart here. I don't think he's exactly reading Tolstoy between murders. But Jason is a master of instinctive intelligence. That is, he knows how to stalk, ambush, and trap his victims. In fact, you might even call him an expert of terrain navigation, particularly around the woods of Camp Crystal Lake. You see, there's several examples of Jason knowing how to use his environment to his advantage. His ability to move silently whilst tracking his prey, all whilst remaining hidden, shows a keen predatory instinct. You can think of him like a horror version of a silent hunter, knowing that he doesn't need to rush. Because Jason knows that time is on his side, and that he doesn't need to race after his victims, because they'll tire eventually, and when they do, he'll be waiting there to pounce. Now let's get into Jason's best-known talent, his durability. Bullets, what? 
Knives, please. Jason's body is like a horror version of Wolverine's in that it heals at an absurd rate. I mean, the guy's been shot, stabbed, drowned, electrocuted, and even set on fire, and he just gets up like it's a minor inconvenience. It's not just that he has a very high pain threshold, his physiology is completely evolved from that of normal human beings. For example, his muscle density is way off the charts, allowing him to smash through walls, lift up his victims with one arm, and decapitate victims with one swing of his machete. Essentially, Jason's a human tank, powered by supernatural energy. And let's just take a moment to talk a bit about this supernatural twist. In the later films, we find out that Jason isn't just hard to kill, he's actually tied to some form of evil force beyond the grave. And we see this in Jason Goes to Hell, when it takes a mystical dagger to send him to the underworld. And some fans think that after his mother's death, that Jason became linked to some form of evil curse or spirit that just kept bringing him back effectively making him immune to any traditional form of death. Now, here's a really interesting weakness. Despite all of Jason's power, he has one major psychological weakness, that is his fear of water. But that makes sense, right? It's the trauma from his early childhood drowning, which is buried deep in his psyche. In fact, in Freddy vs. Jason, we see Freddy Krueger actually using Jason's fear of water to incapacitate him. So you can kind of imagine water being Jason's kryptonite. What it's actually doing is triggering Jason's amygdala, which is part of the brain that's responsible for fear and your survival instinct. So you see, Jason's not invulnerable to everything. Deep down, he's still that scared little boy who drowned at Camp Crystal Lake. And then there's Jason X. Because when you've been stabbed, shot, and set on fire, what else is there left to do? Oh yes, go to space. In Jason X, Jason gets cryogenically frozen and then thawed out in the 25th century. But how did he survive this? Scientifically speaking, freezing Jason would put his body into suspended animation, thereby preventing any further decay of his tissues. Of course, normal human beings, however, cannot survive this process. But when he's revived, he's enhanced with nanotechnology, making him an even more deadlier monster. The only comparison to Jason in space is like a T-1000 in a hockey mask. He's become a cybernetic killing machine. His tissue's been repaired and his body reinforced with futuristic materials, making him faster, stronger, and even more indestructible. So, the million dollar question, how do we defeat Jason Voorhees? So far we've seen him crushed, disintegrated, and sent to hell, yet still he keeps coming back. Well, here are a few methods that have worked so far, even if it was just temporary. One, immobilization. Whilst Jason is effectively immortal, trapping him can work. We've seen that heavy chains, freezing, and burying him underground can work, at least for a while. Two, psychological weaknesses. We've seen that his fear of water has certainly been exploited before. So get him close to a large body of water, and you might have the chance to mentally paralyze him. Three, extreme physical trauma. In Jason Goes to Hell, it took a mystical dagger to finish him off. Destroying his body down to a molecular level seems like the best way to stop him, at least temporarily. Unless that is if you've got a direct line to the supernatural. Four, supernatural means. So we know that Jason's tied to some dark force, so using magic, curses, or occult practices might be the only way to keep him down for good. But let's be honest, if Jason really wants to come back, there isn't really any way of stopping him. So maybe the best way to defeat Jason is quite simple. Don't go camping at Camp Crystal Lake. Now that we've dissected Jason's supernatural side, let's zoom into something a little bit more human, that is, Jason's brain. Specifically how hydrocephalus, a medical condition, not only affected his appearance, but also his brain development, mentality, and why we've never heard him say a word. Spoiler alert, Jason's silence may have a little bit more underneath the surface than him coming across as the strong silent type. 
So let's start with the basics. Hydrocephalus is where you get an excess buildup of cerebrospinal fluid, that is the fluid that surrounds and protects the brain, which accumulates in the brain's ventricles, causing them to swell. Now, in the normal brain, this fluid flows through channels before being reabsorbed, keeping everything in balance. But when this fluid builds up, it creates pressure compressing the brain's tissues. And unfortunately, this swelling can affect your brain function, particularly in young children when their brain is still being developed. If left untreated, this condition can lead to cognitive impairments, intellectual difficulties, and in Jason's case, extreme emotional and behavioural challenges. The Jason Voorhees we know hasn't just been shaped by trauma and revenge, his brain is literally different from ours. So, how does hydrocephalus affect the mind? Well, think of the brain like a control centre. The excess pressure from the fluid buildup primarily affects the parts of the brain that are involved in decision making, emotional regulation and communication. For Jason, this pressure has likely damaged key areas in the frontal lobe, which is the part of the brain that's responsible for impulse control, problem solving and rational thought. If Jason's frontal lobe is compromised, it would mean that he's not processing his emotions or decision making like a neurotypical person would. And this could help to explain why he's prone to rage-filled impulsive violence. He's functioning on a primitive, almost instinctive level only. His limbic system, which governs your fight or flight response, could also be damaged and hyperactive. With a damaged brain, Jason's emotion could be in constant overdrive. He could be experiencing fear, anger and pain without any emotional regulation to help him handle them. And as a result, he reacts in the only way he knows how, through aggression. In Jason's mind, you're not just a camp counsellor, you're a threat. And as we know what Jason does with any threat, you're eliminated. Now, here's a question that's puzzled horror fans for decades. Why doesn't Jason talk? After all, we know he's not a mindless monster. As we've seen, he's able to plan, track, and as we've discussed, fight with tactical intelligence. So why doesn't he ever say a word? Well, let's break it down. So, Jason's silence could well be due to damage to the Broca's area, which is part of the brain that's responsible for verbal communication. His brain might just not be able to form speech, which doesn't necessarily mean he can't think or feel. Now, imagine the frustration that Jason is capable of understanding what's going on around him. He knows who you are, he knows what you're doing, and he knows how he's going to kill you, but he just can't express it. So that's why, instead of talking, Jason lets his actions do the talking for him. And his actions are loud enough, wouldn't you say? But it's equally possible that Jason's silence isn't just as a physical impairment. It could be due to a deep emotional issue. Think about it. Jason growing up as a child who's deformed, isolated, ridiculed or possibly even ignored, all becomes core to who he is as an adult. It's not just that he's incapable of speech, it's that his whole identity is identified in isolation. In addition to this, if his brain was damaged at a young age, he may never have developed social connections. His mother, Pamela Voorhees, was his only caretaker, and we all know how stable she was. And after her death, Jason became even more withdrawn. Without his mother's protective influence, his silence morphed from an inability to a weapon. It's now part of his intimidation, his mystery, and ultimately his legend. However, let's get this straight. Jason's mind isn't as blank as it might seem. He may not be a genius, but he's also not a brute, acting on instinct alone. And you could argue that his simplicity is possibly one of his most terrifying traits. Jason's limited mental capacity means that there's nothing there to distract him from his goal, which is to kill. He's free from thinking about any moral dilemmas, second thoughts or fear of any consequences of his actions. He doesn't hesitate, he doesn't negotiate and importantly, he doesn't overthink. And honestly, that's probably why he's so good at what he does. So, to sum it all up, Jason Voorhees isn't just a mindless killing machine. He's a complex combination of medical tragedy, psychological trauma and supernatural power. 
His hydrocephalus helps to explain his facial deformities, his cognitive impairments, and why he never speaks. But rather than making him weaker, these limitations have transformed him into a relentless force of nature. And really, it's his silence, his brutality, and his almost childlike single-mindedness that makes him one of the most enduring characters in horror. So next time you hear the soft sound of rustling leaves behind you at Camp Crystal Lake, just remember, Jason might not say a word, but you know exactly what's on his mind. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, because let's be honest, the last thing you want is Jason showing up at your door.